Hi, and welcome to Journey Forward with Jory Rose, where you will gain insights, tools, and inspiration to get unstuck and live your best life. Jory is a licensed marriage and family therapist with a passion for helping people cultivate awareness and authenticity so they can show up fully in all aspects of their life. And now, here's Jory. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Journey Forward with Jory Rose. So I'm on here today with the solo cast wanting to share with you all uh, a little bit of where I've been in terms of my own journey. As authenticity is one of my highest values, I really want to embody and embrace my own vulnerability and sharing with you the journey that I'm on as not only a reflection of that authenticity, but also as motivation, inspiration, encouragement, and all of the things that you might be wanting to have in your life to see what it looks like in practice. So some context of uh, where I have been lately is, as you guys know, I talk so much about getting unstuck. And my whole journey forward is all about what does that forward momentum look like? How is it that we cultivate the life we want to be living? What are the areas in which we feel that we are being held back? And so often uh, I focus on the tangible things such as, well, maybe not so much tangible, but the things that we can really pinpoint and get curious about. The things that hold us back can easily be our mindsets, our narratives, the patterns that we get stuck in, how we interact with whatever it is that's arising in this present moment. You've heard me before, if you've listened to the podcast for a while, I talk about the cycle of reactivity, which is a pattern that I have observed in years of doing this work in which uh, we have a thought. Let's say the thought is, I can't do that, whatever that is. Uh, that tends to lead to a sensation in our body, sometimes tension, tightness, increased heart rate. We then experience an emotion, could be dread, overwhelm, anxiety, shame, guilt, fear, sadness. And because those emotions are difficult to feel, we tend to react either by denying, resisting, or ignoring, or we go into fix-it mode, or we go into uh, asking why me, why is this happening, you know, whatever our reactions are. So when we get into reactivity, usually that increases the thoughts, increases the sensations, increases the emotions, and so on and so forth. So I focus a lot on those kinds of patterns because I see in all the 20 years I've been working with clients that our patterns tend to get us really stuck, preventing us from where we want to be. That's one reason I love mindfulness practice so much because mindfulness gives us the awareness to see what's arising with compassion rather than judgment and the tools and the frameworks and the practices to be able to respond to whatever is arising in this moment. In addition to those patterns, as I mentioned, we get stuck in narratives. I think this is a place that is so hard to change because our narratives, the stories that we're telling ourselves, are so deeply rooted and yet can become a massive roadblock into moving us forward. And then mindsets, mindset like, you know what, I've got so much trauma, I'm never going to be able to change. Mindsets like, this is too hard, I can't do that. Mindsets that I see a lot is people getting stuck in uh, fear uh, rather than trust. People getting stuck in lack rather than abundance. Some of these fundamental mindsets really can prevent us from being able to move the needle, move the mark to get us forward in whatever direction forward actually means. And by direction, I mean whatever capacity that looks like, right? It could be something tangible like a new job, wanting to make more money, wanting to cultivate a relationship, wanting to improve your relationship. It could be your health. It could be your wellness. It could be your sleep. 
It could simply be a way that you embody change and resilience, right? Whatever that forward is, these are the things that get us stuck. Well, there's another area that I haven't talked too much about, but I know for me has played a really powerful piece in my own stuckness. And it's not my patterns. It's a little bit about my narratives. It's not my mindset, but it has to do with energy. And I have become more and more attuned to energy as how it shows up in our body, in our experiences, in our relationships. So I have been feeling stuck in some energetic ties to some relationships in my life that are not in alignment with where I actually currently am in my life, nor are they in alignment with where I really want to be. And I have made a conscious choice to shift out of that energy that is holding me back. Now, some of the things that have held me to those energetic ties are my old narratives. Rooted in that is uh, some fear and some lack versus trust and abundance. Some of those energetic ties are tied to my narratives around who I was at the origin of those relationships and the seemingly difficult task to really shift and embody my identity fully in relationships that have been long lasting when the other person is unwilling or unable or doesn't have the desire to change. So you can see how when in any kind of relationship, someone does not have the desire to change, it can hold you back from embodying your growth. And not some of the energetic stuckedness that I was feeling. So I have been in a very conscious practice of embodying the change I wish to seek and getting really, really clear on how I can get into alignment regarding my thoughts, my emotions, my actions, and my energy. So all of this sounds great conceptually, but what has actually manifested has been fascinating. I have found that when I get really, really clear, that is when things begin to change. When I trust my path and when I have real clarity on where it is I'm going, that seems for me to be one of the ways to move the roadblocks out of the way. So there's a couple particular areas, like I mentioned, that I was feeling this stuckedness regarding my energy and the negative energy I was giving to certain relationships that were out of alignment with where I am now. Well, I was really proud of myself because I stood my sacred ground, as I like to call it, and I embodied my power and I made some bold declarations in some of these relationships. And by embodying my power, holding my sacred ground, making some bold declarations, this began an energetic shift of how I showed up in the dynamic. And previously, being able to stand in my power and hold my sacred ground felt fearful and overwhelming and difficult because I was unsure of how it would be received. And as long as I put the success on my power, based on how someone else either receives or validates or approves it, then I am at whim to how someone else is going to see me. And that is going to keep me stuck. So when I fully embraced the non-attachment to what gets received, but the full presence and authenticity and embodiment of who I am and how I'm showing up, and consciously releasing the fear and the narrative and the lack so I could step into trust and abundance. So this was tangible in some conversations. But then 
things started to happen. And this is where the magic unfolds. This is where the universe sends me the constant sign saying, Jory, I hear you, I see you, and I've got your back. So prior to all of this, I was already scheduled to have my windows replaced in my house. But it turns out that the timing of some of these conversations occurred the very week the windows were getting replaced. And if you've ever worked with me, and I'm not sure I've talked about it too much here on the podcast, but I am always fascinated at the spiritual meaning of things. I am fascinated at the spiritual meaning of illness, of looking into the deeper meaning of what is uh, the energy centers in our body reflecting in our chakras. It is not unlike me when a client of mine who is either sick or having surgery or even just has a, a sprained ankle, a broken toe, a sore torn meniscus or hip pain or back pain or neck pain or head pain to always look at the energy at the focal point of that part of the body and see what it represents. But just as our house is a physical embodiment, just like our body embodies our spirit, I looked at the windows being replaced in my house as a reflection of some energy shift. So what was the spiritual meaning that I attuned to in the changing of my windows? Well, for me, it represented new boundaries. Because here's the problem. My old windows didn't fully close. The way that the house had settled, some of the windows literally didn't close. So when I had the air conditioning on, the cold air was seeping out, the hot air was getting in. Same with the heater. In the fire season, the smoky air was coming into the house. It wasn't clean. So windows are definitely a reflection of the boundaries. And as I got new windows, and I tightened up and I cleaned up the boundaries. The windows also provided me greater insulation. The windows provided me greater clarity. I could see clearer through them. People could see clearer to me. And they provided a little bit more firm access in and firm access out. So at first, I just thought, well, I'm having these conversations. The windows are being replaced. That is fully in alignment with me shifting the boundaries, making it tighter, cleaner, aligned. Well, then more began to shift. The day that the windows were getting replaced, it took it over two days. The first day the windows were getting replaced, my TV broke. I've had this TV for almost 10 years. I've never had one single problem with it. I was home relaxing at the end of the night and I was so happy just to get on the couch and relax and boom, the TV just died. It briefly came back to life the next day and then that was it, it was done. I thought, huh, that's kind of interesting. I noted it, I was frustrated about it because that was an expense I didn't expect to have to have. And it was what it was. Well, the next day after the TV died, as the windows were getting replaced, because they have to like jackhammer the windows out of the walls, the walls were shaking. And for some reason in the particular room, they did not ask me to remove the items from the, from the shelves adjacent to the window. And so some of the items fell off. All but one of the items that fell off were fine. One particular item fell off and broke. And of course, what broke held significance. It was directly tied to one of the relationships in which I had been trying to shift my energy to hold my sacred ground. And that little tchotchke falling off my wall broke. I thought, okay, universe, I hear you. It's time for renewal. The windows were all about renewal. The TV, okay, old energy out with the old Let's bring in some new energy. Okay, the tchotchke broke. All right, it's time to clean up what's in my house. Well, a couple of days later, my garage wouldn't close. 
which is bizarre because I just got the motor replaced a couple of years ago. There's no good reason the garage should have closed. And yet it was not firm boundaries. The garage was open about, I don't know, maybe six inches. That happened on a Sunday. Sunday evening, I walk into my home office and I go to turn on my light and the light won't go on. And I'm uncertain, is it the light bulb that burned out or is it the remote control battery that burned out? Turns out through testing it, it was both the light and the battery. And at this point, I just had to sit back and laugh. And I thought, okay, universe, I get it. I asked for clearer boundaries. I asked for renewal. I asked to help release some of the things that were holding me back by shedding old energy, outdated energy, energy that was not aligned. I was seeking clarity and newness. I was seeking a firm boundary around how it is I want to show up in my life, what is being reflected to me, and all of it had to do with energy. And all of these things that broke or fell or needed to be replaced was an energetic reminder of the work I was doing internally in my own body was showing up in my house. And turns out with the garage, literally like a bolt fell out of the, the mechanism. Like it's been there for over three years. Why are bolts just falling? And yet for me and my experience, this is perfectly in alignment with my path. Whenever it is that I feel overwhelmed and I need confirmation from the universe that I am on the right path, I literally put myself into an open heart position, put my arms outstretched, my chest open, my face and eyes uplifted to the, to the skies, to the universe. And I say, okay, universe, help me out. Show me that I'm on the right path. Let me know that my intentions are going to come to fruition, that I am being supported, and all of these things. And there's actually a couple of more items that occurred in which it was alignment with me releasing the old to make space for the new. And some people might be hearing this and say, yeah, Jory, you know, you're, you're stretching it. This is far-fetched. You're trying to look for the meaning in too much. And yet I know with certainty that my energy is powerful. And as my therapist once told me years ago to get a magic wand so I can make sure to point that energy in the right direction. And I am so grateful, not only for the new windows, I am so grateful for the TV breaking and the tchotchke falling and the garage breaking and the light bulb burning out and the battery needing to be replaced because it was all a reflection of the inner work in which I was recharging and renewing and realigning my energy so I can shed the old patterns, the mindsets, the narratives that are holding me back so I can get to the next level of what it is that I'm seeking. And let me tell you, while it's overwhelming from a financial perspective for some of these things, I have never felt more trust and more alignment that I am on the right path. Well, I can't say never. I would say the last time that I felt this big of a shift in my own journey was um, about 12 years ago. Um, maybe about 11 and a half years ago, actually. And for those of you who've listened to the podcast since the beginning, you might have heard this story, but I'll, I'll share briefly, in which I had a light that went on all by itself. And my light went on by itself after I had clearly set the intention that I was not going to let my inner light, my energy, my spark, my essence go out. And I had made a very clear declaration that I was not going to let my light go out. And literally the very next day, I had a light go on by itself. It had never gone on before. And nothing had changed in my room. And that light went on with regularity for about six weeks. And every time it went on, it was like, of course, 
my light is not going out. That was the universe supporting my intention for fear that my essence, my energy, my spark, my light was going to dim and that I couldn't fully embrace who I was meant to be. Well, the day after the second to last time that my light went on, I turned 33. And around that same time, I kept seeing the number 33 everywhere. I would wake up in the middle of the night and it would be 33 on the clock. I would be behind a car where the last two numbers were 33. I would be seated at a table 33 out of a table. uh, We were on a cruise, hundreds of tables. We got number 33. Literally, the 33 was everywhere. And it wasn't until I was driving and I saw a license plate that had the number six at the beginning which at the time cars in California began with the number six. And then the next three letters were my initials, JTR. And then it was the number 033. If that wasn't a divine intervention of the universe saying, I'm here, I got you, I see you, I don't know what was. I saw that car for the first time in August of what year was that now? That must have been 2013. The last time I saw that car was in the middle of COVID. I have seen that car probably a dozen times. It lives somewhere in my town. My guess is the car doesn't exist anymore, that it's probably too old. But I always saw that car at moments of significance in which I was either questioning my path, needed confirmation of my path. I'd look up and there it was. I probably have at least a half a dozen photos of being able of when I was driving to even like have the wherewithal to to get out my phone, take a picture and safely, you know, keep driving while having proof of here is this car at the moment of my own awareness. Well, it took many months into seeing the number 33 that I even learned what the number 33 was. It is a number in numerology, which is the highest of the three master numbers. It is a representation of a completion of one phase and an initiation into another. It's also the age that Jesus was when he died died and resurrected. So there's a lot of religious, religious, cultural, and social um, rhetoric around the power of this number. And I still see it today. It has astounded me at the extent to which I have seen the number 33. And I always seem to see it when I need confirmation from the universe. So my light and the 33, those all happened within the same year. And over the years, I have had varying degrees of science from the universe. But this particular week and a half has felt a really, really strong presence. And I am so grateful for it because it is time for me to shed what is holding me back. It is time for me to clean up my thoughts, to make sure that the quality of my thoughts are in alignment with my desired outcomes. And if you guys have ever read the book, Anatomy of the Spirit by Carolyn Miss, there is phenomenal information in this book that really reiterates just how important the quality of our thoughts are in our overall health and the outcomes of our life. And I think I'll save that for another episode. But all of the work that I've been doing to stand in my power, to reclaim my power, to show up authentically in my relationships, to have the difficult conversations, not being attached to the outcome of how it's received, but to stand boldly in who I am and to make a contract with the universe, to make an agreement that I am cleaning up my boundaries, I am cleaning up my energy, and I am seeking alignment both in and out of my physical body as represented as in my physical home. And there it is. And even this week when I've pulled some um, angel cards and power thought cards, actually the angel card I pulled was power. One of the positive thought cards said, your home is peaceful. Well, my home is both my body as well as my physical home. And both my body and my spirit are aligned in my energy and my physical home has recently gotten a renewal of the things that are inside that needed replacing. 
And in fact, even when I was journaling about the windows, I realized, oh my God, the, the name of the window company is Renewal by Anderson. So like literally in its, its branding was giving me renewal. So I hope that this episode has inspired you to attune into your own energy and spirit, to get curious around where you might be stuck in your narratives, your patterns, your mindsets, but really looking at the energy that is depleting you, the energy that is seeping into relationships that are holding you back and doing what you can to reclaim your power, to stand boldly in your authenticity and to realign your energy and spirit. So that way your path that you are seeking to have unfold will unfold with greater ease and greater flow, with more abundance, allowing you to really be living fully the life you wanna be living. So thanks you much, thanks you guys so much for tuning in. And if this episode spoke to you, I'd love to hear some feedback. Um, send me a DM on Instagram at Jory Rose or give a review or rating or share the episode. And I'm so grateful for you listening today because I am most certain that energy is contagious and this will spark something in you that needs to be awoken. All right, you guys take care and be well. To continue your journey forward, find Jory Rose on Facebook and Instagram to become part of her growing community. You can also gain access to her meditations, books, online classes, or to sign up for an upcoming retreat, visit her at joryrose.com. That's J-O-R-E-E-R-O-S-E dot -E -E com.